Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. That means it's time for another live stream. Today is Tuesday, August 23rd. August, yeah, August 23rd. I'm so off today that I didn't, wasn't even sure of the month. August 23rd, 2022. And I had to double check on the date again. I'm just, I'm still a little bit out of it. Just got back from fall yesterday. I mean, not just got back. I got back in the middle of the day, but it was a whirlwind of a weekend. I had so much fun, so many adventures. Uh, that it still has my head spinning a little bit, but I'm glad to be back. Just got back from a run in Moraine Hills State Park in the area, got in the shower, and now I'm ready for a oh, live stream. Hopefully you guys are doing well, especially everyone listening in on the audio-only version. Hopefully you got good weather because there's some crazy weather happening around the country. Too much rain, not enough rain, too hot, not hot enough. We got it all, but hopefully it's nice and mild for you out there on your runs. And everyone watching this later on YouTube later, welcome to you guys as well. Hopefully you've had a nice and easy day, and this is a way to kind of cruise into the evening slash into bedtime. All right, let's see uh, who we got here in the chat. Um, normally on Tuesdays, we do play um, a game. I like, I tr like to play a game. I like to play some trivia. Terrence suggesting the game for today. Whose foot is <laughs> That would be if I should have done that. Well, I don't know. I'm not going to take pictures of people's feet, but that would have been a funny game to play. Um, take people, pictures of people's feet, everyone's feet, since I was with everybody in, uh, in Falmouth this weekend. That, that would have been a lot of fun. <laughs> but I think, uh, you know, not, not, a, not appropriate for, for the internet, I guess. That's just the day and age that we live in. Uh, let's see who else we got here. Martha's here, says, we, she says the, the thumbnail and she recognizes the Tracksmith packaging. And she says, more vicarious throws after watching the Falmouth Weekend vid. And Eliza says, just finished that video too. So wonderful. Thanks so much, guys, for watching that one. I had, uh, I, I mean, hopefully that came through. I had a great time the entire weekend. Um, and making the video, living the life of the video, uh, and especially running that race this year. It was just so good. The The crowd energy was just phenomenal. And, um, you know, like I've, I've been to many great races before. I'm not trying to put any other town down. But there's just something about the energy in the crowd this weekend that I thought was just extra special. Something that I really can't, like, can't put my finger on, but it was just like man, this is a special day. This is a special group. These, uh, it, it's just a lot of fun. So I, I hopefully that came across to the video. And uh, if you haven't watched it yet, go and check it out. It'll, it's up there now, but you can watch it after, after the live stream. And it says, hi, Kapuzin, everybody. Just in from a sub 21 5K with Pip around town. Nice. Good to test the legs a bit. And Pip was very happy. I feel like it's got to be really great for the dogs when they get to let it rip and go for it. It's got to be a lot of fun, so that's good to hear. Jonathan Crossy says, uh, I was in Lehigh, Utah late last week for work, but it appears as though the Ultra Outlet is closed for good. Did get a pair of Adidas Marathon shorts, though, that I'm loving. Um, that's a bummer. That's a bummer. I feel like that would have been like a fun trip to like do at some point. It's like stop through at the Adidas Ultra, or not the Adidas, at the Ultra Outlet. Um, and a bummer. We were just talking about that. Bummer that it's, that it's closed. Ah, oh, man. Let's see what else we got here. Sean says, hey, everyone, welcome back. It was a nice work in Falmouth on a tough day. He's been nuts up here this summer. Yeah, thank you. Um, was, I got Guys, I got a chance to meet Sean uh, on the ShakeOut Run on Saturday, so that was super cool. Uh, always uh, great to meet people in the ShakeOut Run, especially fun to meet people who I've been interacting with in the chat, like in the live stream regularly. So definitely a real treat for me. Um, you know, I, I was on my run, and I was feeling pretty good. I almost decided to take a second rest day in a row today because I was feeling a little bit lethargic this morning, helping the kids get to school now that they're in school. But uh, I decided to go out anyway. I had a really fun day out on the trails. Um, I mean, it's just like a, it's a packed gravel trail, you know, half packed gravel, half pavement, like a bike trail. Um, like I could take my road bike on it probably easy enough for, for that kind of terrain. But um I was just there, out there going easy, having a great time. And I was listening to the Sidious Mag podcast um, from this week. Well, I listened to a lot to, I've been listening to What Made Maddie Run, uh, the audiobook. Um, but then after a while, like I switched over to the Sidious Mag podcast and um, Kyle Merber was there. And I got to give Kyle Merber a little bit of a fist bump before the race um, in Falmouth. And, uh, Apparently they started in the podcast with him like coming in off the off the course because they had like a little post race interview area set up. 
long clothes by the time I got through. But they had that set up and Kyle comes in and he sits down and he's talking about how hot it was and how big the last hill was. And I'm like, okay, good. Now I'm glad that like someone that maybe people will um, take more seriously than me when I say it's a big hill um, will will be more sympathetic for all of the Falmouth runners because that, that hill is a big hill and the heat was hot. It was really, really hot that day. <laughs> oh, awesome. One horsepower is here. He says, yo, what's going on, Co and chat? Luke Klein says, hello, fellow Kabuziaks. Hi, Mike. Welcome back. It's good to be back. I'm, I'm very happy to be back um, at home, uh, you know, sleeping in my own bed, you know, doing my own thing. Uh, again, getting back into the routine. Uh, while I was gone, I feel like um, uh, there's a lot of gender role reversal in my house. Um, but it's like I was gone for the weekend. And like when I came back, I just felt like, I think my, my wife did laundry once, but I actually think my in-laws had stopped through. Uh, they went to for a long weekend out at Michigan. And I think they actually ran the dishwasher and the washing machine once because otherwise I think my wife had just kind of like let everything pile up in the sink. So I, I'm, I'm playing catch up here uh, with the laundry and, and with the dishes. It's not, it's not too bad, but um, just getting back into the swing of thing and looking forward to get into some routine. It's been a lot of travel this summer. That's my last big trip uh, for a while. So um very much ready for like school year and all that stuff. Um, Thomas Flynn says, Hey everyone, Heiko, what shades did you wear on Sunday at Falmouth? I wore a pair of Shady Rays. I got them because I wanted um, clear frames. Um, I like clear or fun colored sunglasses, usually like the Wayfarer style, like that Ray-Ban style with mirror finish sunglasses. Those are kind of like my favorite. That's my recipe for fun for running glasses. Um, so I ordered this pair of Shady Rays they were not great for running. They are super slippery and they just kept falling down my face. So I was just fighting the sunglasses the entire time. And then I was like, and then Thomas was asking me about it. We were all, we all jumped in the ocean after the race. And Thomas asked me about it. I'm like, yeah, these are great. And I was like, look, they float. And I put them in the ocean <laughs> and they started sinking right away. I did catch them, but I was like, whoop, never mind. I bought two pairs of sunglasses. This was the pair that doesn't float. Never mind. So not only do they not float, but they also don't stick on your face really well when you're sweating a lot. So. Um, a fun pair of sunglasses to have, very lightweight, comfortable, just not like a hot, sweaty summer day kind of sunglass, but yeah, overall. Okay. All right. Eliza wants to know what's in the box. All right. Let me scroll down. Sorry for you guys. Um, I'll answer some more of those other questions too. I see Daniel, you got a question in there, but let's start, um, let's start with this box. Just got like a regular I'm trying to like not show my, uh, Trying to not show my address here. That didn't have my address on it. That was fine. But it's just like a regular um, cardboard box. I gotta just do a better job. I just gotta take all the stickers off before I hop on camera. Um, but um, you guys might remember, because we talked about how I ordered these like online. So I think that's what this first one is. It is from uh, Running Warehouse or Roadrunner Sports? Running warehouse, this one. These are shoes that I bought myself. And these are Sauconies. And they are. These are the, and I almost threw it at the camera. Endorphin Speed 3. So they do look very similar to the Endorphin Pros. Some of the ways that you can notice the difference is there's like a little bit of a black, uh, piece of plastic that's in here. I think that's part of the shank. And then on the Endorphin Pros, this part that's above the gold trim is a uh, black color. And then you could tell by the upper, cause this is more just like kind of like a normal, like running shoe upper, still very thin, very lightweight, not a lot of padding, um, but not like the fishnet upper in the Pro. So that is the Endorphin Speed 3. You can also tell it looks a little bit different on the outsole as well for the Pro. You sorry for the pro you would see like the little inset of the carbon and then also in the carbon up here you're not seeing that here um instead you're just getting like a little strip of rubber in the forefoot so excited to get this one on test it out it feels super squishy compared to kind of like last year's speed so i felt like the endorphin speed 2 last year firmed up a little bit compared to the endorphin speed 1 um that came out the year before that so i'm hoping that this works out for me. The interesting thing is there's like a big rubber, like seashell in the back. It's not too stiff, but it's very weird. Very odd. All right. Um, 
Yeah, Devin said it's not as good looking as the Pro 3. I would, uh, yeah, I mean, you know what? I feel like, you know, if, if the Pro 3 is too much for you, then maybe the, I think the look of the Speed 3, I think would kind of like, it would like scratch the same itch, I guess. That's what I'm saying. Um, yeah, Stevie 76 said prison shanks, not prison shanks, just plastic shanks, I guess. <laughs> um, Affluent Journeys, AJ says, the black looks okay. Um, the fuchsia and the blue are fugly AF. Yeah, I mean, the blue one, I don't, I don't like ASIC. Uh, uh, I don't like the um, Saucony blue. Like the, what was it, the all-weather one that they did? I didn't love that one. That didn't work for me. I didn't get that one either, but maybe it looks better in person than on, on foot. But I've seen people wearing it, and I'm like, no, I don't, that's not. It looks like a blue, like a racer, a blue crayon, something that just doesn't work for me. Um, Sean says that the Speed 3s look clean. The Pro looked a little, I don't know, crazy. I can hear what you're saying with that. It's a fishnet part. Like this is just more like a normal, a normal but it's more of like a racer fit upper. Um, so it's not, like, it's not like a Ride 15 upper on here. It's definitely something in, in between. And I do think that it feels like, at least visually from what I'm looking, what I'm feeling holding it in hand, that it seems like there's better differentiation in terms of like first impressions between the pro, the speed, and then something else like the ride or the shift. So, I mean, I think, did you guys hear that? What was that? All right, anyway. Uh, so I think, I think that's, those are good moves. So we'll see. I'm gonna see how, where I could slot these in for this week. I'm now like three weeks out from my 5k coming up september 10th two weeks out something like that so i gotta figure out like where i can slot these in workout wise um yeah should be fun though i'll figure it out all right um Byron nathan said hi Co. i need a replacement on my clifton 8 can you recall how the Nova 3 feels in comparison to the clifton 8 should i go half a size down i would not go a half size down i know thomas I don't, I don't know if Robbie's, no, I think it was just Thomas is the only one that was talking about, as far as the people that I know. We're talking about sizing down in the Nova Blast 3. It, it feels long, but similarly long to the Nova Blast 2 and the Nova Blast 1. I don't think that they changed the last. The material is stretchier, certainly, than the Nova Blast 1, but it's more like the Nova Blast 2, but it, it, it's increasingly stretchy. So that might also be it, too. That's why maybe he's feeling like he needs to size down. I like the size. Um, and as far as like, if you like a Clifton eight sizing, I would say with the same sizing that you went with the Clifton eight, um, as far as sizing, if you're looking to switch from one to the other, Luke Klein has a really good question. Is the pro three a good marathon shoe or would you opt for something else? I'm not sure yet. So I've done a little bit of marathon effort of work in the pro three, um, like two times, two miles at marathon effort. Uh, but that longer workout was like, I had some threshold mile repeats and then some 5k pace short bursts and some strides so just kind of putting it through the paces that day it did really well at all of those but i think for me to really say like is the endorphin pro 3 a good one i think one of the things that i want to try to make sure i do for these marathon super shoes especially for the endorphin pro since i know that i've loved the shoe just not for marathons in the past is like take it out for like a, at least two times five miles at marathon effort or like one times 10 miles marathon effort within an even longer run to get a sense of like, okay, can I take this for 26? I'm leaning towards yes, but you know, I have to, I have to test it to make sure, you know? So I, it's a good question. I just don't know yet. All right. Um, one HP says, I love my pro three. I'm loving just about everything from Saucony recently. Awesome. Looks like we got Tommy in here. He says, Coco, Coco, co. what's going on, Tommy? Good to see you. I hope you, you made it back to Detroit safely. It, it was good to see you, man. Um, speaking of the Saucony Endorphin Pro, if you guys are going to be in the Detroit area, Tommy's doing a um, Saucony launch party with, I always forget the name of the running of the shoe store that you work with, Tommy, but they're doing something together. It's going to be pretty cool. Tommy was telling me about it over the weekend. Very exciting. So, Check out Tommy's Instagram. He has details on it there if you're going to be in the area. Mm. Mm, yeah, this is a run shield. Luke Klein said, the Saucony run shield is good for wet or slushy running. And what matters to Matt said, the Blue Speed 3s look like a Smurf. I think that there's just like 
too much blue in it is kind of like my 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 take on it you know um that's all mm. dad around says yo Cohen, everyone what's going on dad good to see you um uh, sean says, so at what point does megan murray become a sponsored elite runner that girl is fast she's very fast um i think that she probably will need to hit the otq time before that i don't know if she's interested in becoming a sponsored elite runner i think she's very interested in running faster um and chasing the, like the um i mean i'm sure if it's one of those things where like if someone gave her she was at that level some gave her a contract she's not gonna be like no i have like reasons why i don't want to but um yeah i mean i mean she's got to get she's got some time to chop down i think it'll be an interesting next like 20 months or so for her as she chases that otq very excited to see what she does um like if you notice like she's i mean there were some people at so for the video today the the falmouth road race one uh, and i'm trying to say it correctly someone corrected me I've been saying fall myth, but it's foul, foul, almost like foul mouth, but it's foul myth. Hold on. Okay. Fall, f foul myth. Um, you know, I got everyone, I got high fives with everyone, but only the people that finished like around when I finished, but like Robbie, um, Connor, Megan, Tommy, they all finished like, not right. Did I say Robbie? I meant Tommy. Did I say I don't know. My my mind just went blank for a second. But they all finished like way ahead of me. So that's why there's no like high fives with them at the end. Megan is definitely in that category too. She's just so far, so far ahead of me. <laughs> um, all right. Mm. Davin wants to know if you were to run a marathon completely with the goal of comfort and feeling great after, what would you wear? Shoes and all. Um like the mo like and I didn't care about time. I think a very fun shoe to run in would be like the Primex. I think a very, I still would lean heavily toward the Sky Plus because I think that even if you're taking it at slower than marathon effort, it's still a really fun shoe. Um, I don't know. I think the, I like, I mean, I love like things like the Bondi and the More, uh, the Fresh Row More, but like I just feel like after a while it'd feel heavy. So I don't know if I would love that, you know, but if we're, if we're just purely talking comfort, like a Bondi, I think would be a good, good, good pick for a trail marathon. I would pick, you know, like a Mafate for sure. If I wanted to be just comfortable, those would be some fun ones. Um, yeah, I ran on the cloud monster again today. And that shoe every once in a while, like it's like every third run I have in it is great. The other two are like, it feels gimmicky. I don't know what to think about that shoe still. Hmm. Let's see. Um, Runner Wills here. He says, what up, what up? Oh, Tommy said, it's Gazelle Sports. I, I always forget it. I know, I like, I could always see the logo in my head. And I'm like, it's an animal. What animal is it? But thanks, Tommy. Sorry, man. Um, all right. Let's get to, um, oh, here's a good question. Japer says, who was the first to finish out of the blue team at Falmouth? I think the first blue finisher was, um, I th I think it was, I think it was Connor. I'm trying to think. Um, I think I was number three. After me came Drew, and then David came in fifth. Do we know we had six, right? I don't know. Um, Connor has all the. We have to. You'll have to wait for the official results from Connor because he had it all tabulated. He spent a lot of time putting it together. I don't know why I don't know why it took so long, but I feel like he was working on that for a really long time after the race trying to figure out where everyone finished. <laughs> oh, man. Um when HP says in the Falmouth area there's a brewery up there called Foul Mouth Brewing. Without that I'd never remember how to pronounce it. Nice. <laughs> oh, Tommy said Tommy was the fastest blue team runner. I mean, oh, yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. I could say I could have seen it going either way, but I think um, Connor was telling me that he. I don't want to spoil his news. But he was telling me that he is starting to train for a, a longer race, but I think I mean seven miles isn't that long for what he used to do in college. But yeah, but good work, Tommy. Good work. 
Uh, Duke BB says, are you getting the New Balance more version four? Yeah, I just saw it goes on sale September 1, right? September 1 is a big day. Um, and so I'll probably, um, I don't know what the launch color is. I want the white one. Same with the Rebel. I don't, I don't want any of the other colors. That like, that like, uh, super, super light minty green that's coming out in all the New Balance shoes, like the Pacer came out in that one. Just not interested at all. Um, yeah. Yeah, so um, I, if I could get the white one, I'll get the one. Because the white one is the one that I saw in Texas at TRE. So I'm like, that's the one that in my mind I want. Or maybe the black one, because I also enjoyed the black one last year for for number three. All right, let's get to the next package. Um, let's do this one here. Uh, little Tracksmith tab, so you guys know what it is. Uh, Ooh. you know what's funny about tracksmith is they always send like this envelope you know and it's just like your receipt but i always feel like oh they sent me a message this time they never send me a message it's just a receipt or like a shipping like invoice or whatever not an invoice so, you know what i mean all right first thing it might surprise some of you guys i mean some of you guys might have seen it but um, this is a Tracksmith package that also is co-branded with Puma. So they have been, they put together a collab mini capsule collection um, from the Legacy of Speed, the uh, podcast series that Pushkin is putting out. And these are, these are actually pretty amazing. Um, a set of split shorts. Look, they are see-through. You could see me through these shorts. Split <laughs> shorts but with a tracksmith rabbit and the puma puma um and then we got the speed city colors in a little tab on the back on these shorts um let's see pocket wise oh we got a key pocket so we got that and it is a lined um split short so these are these are amazing this gold accent looks ended up looking up really nice um yeah. Uh, let's see. Davin said they got nicer bunny stickers now in the envelope. Is this is this different? I, feel, I can't remember. Sometimes the ones that they send are giant. And I'm like, who who is using those giant stickers and what are they putting them on? I don't know. I'm not sure. Mm. Yeah, Brian Batagli said, just listened to that today. Good series. When I heard about it, um, I don't know if they released like the episodes one at a time or what, but when I found out about it, like all six episodes or however many there were were available. I binged that in like two runs. It was it was really, really good. <laughs> really good. Um, great story to listen to. Mm. All right, let's see what else we got in the box. I've, I've never gotten a box from like Tracksmith before, but it's like almost like a shoe box. But it's got like the um the stripe on the side. That perforation didn't work out very well. This is not a great unboxing experience. There we go. Again, see it looks like they sent me a message. Another sticker, a different color. And then just like the invoice. <laughs> it's always, it always throws me for a loop. All right. Let's see. Whoa, wait a minute. What? It, dude, what is this? Um, hold on. Hold on. First, let's do this. So we saw the Speed City shorts. This. This feels very California to me. Speed City. This logo is pretty awesome. Um, short sleeve, like sweatshirt. So, uh, you know, I'm a little bit confused by that, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Um, but I do really enjoy this Speed City logo and being able to kind of um, represent that part of running history. Really, really cool, really cool. Um, it's heavy, very heavy. Definitely not gonna be able to wear it as a t-shirt. Um, 
I mean, is it going to be super weird to wear these with like arm sleeves underneath? <laughs> um, but check out this. I haven't seen this kind of tracksmith um, patch before on the bottom. Like, because they got the Puma and the tracksmith next to each other. So that's really nice. And then the Speed City colors, the original colors in this little tab in that tracksmith, like thin, thicker, thin thing. It's awesome. All right. Uh, yeah, Brian Battaglia says, Belichick asks. That's what I was, that's why I was like, all right, well, tracksmiths like Boston, you know. <laughs> she like you should go punch some sides of beef with that shirt on. <laughs> all right. Um, let's see, what's this? This is wild. This is a shoebox. And I really don't know what's going to be in this. Let's take a look. It says, Tracksmiths and Puma celebrate Speed City and athletes who build a culture of courage on and off the track. Ooh. This is a pair of Nitro Elites. I have not yet run it in this shoe yet. And it's got the Speed City, the, um, the Puma Tracksmith collab logo on there. Look at that. This is interesting. This shoe is see-through. You can see all the way through it. Mm-hmm. Nice. That is wild. I was I was not excited. I thought it might be like sweatpants in the box. But like, what? Cool. Very cool. Awesome. Have you guys run in this shoe? I have not. I saw a lot of them out on the track on the on the road course over the weekend. Um a lot of the, the Puma athletes were wearing this. So very cool. Awesome. That's what was in the boxes, guys. When HP says, those are sharp. Eric says, not elite Nitro Smith. <laughs> J-Press says, sheesh, that's nice. And Martha says, Co, you're just having way too much fun. I am having too much fun. Uh, Eliza says, wow, that colorway is nice. Lou says, smexy gigs. And Tracy says, love the shoes. Yeah, it looks good. Calvin says, got to up the sock game with those. I know, and my socks are terrible. And I'm like, I think that like I just wear through socks. Yeah, everyone does, right? And uh, I have like, I'm at a point where I'm like, I have like three or pairs of socks and I like two of them. Like, I mean, oh, maybe I have four or five, but I only like like a handful of them. So I'm going to the same ones over and over again. But like, uh, you know, if I get fun socks, then like, I gotta figure out how do I wear, like, what do I wear with a clear shoe? You know, that's hard. So I feel like I had that problem with the Adios Pro 2 last year. I'm like, I don't know what socks to wear in this. I bought a yellow pair of socks to go with it. And then I don't know where that pair of socks went. I don't know, I gotta, I gotta figure out, I gotta figure out some pair of socks. Uh, Ibrahim Gusain says, Co, what podcast you're referring to? It's called Legacy of Speed. It's by Malcolm Gladwell. He did like a mini series um, in collaboration with a Tracksmith and Puma. Um, and he tells the story of Speed City, the San Diego State uh, track team, uh, with um, the athletes that are in that famous photo from Mexico City when they have that, they won the 400 meters, 200 meters, 400 meters. You guys are gonna have to help me out with that one, um, and then put their their fist in the air, uh, and basically we're like excommunicated from running after that. So took a big brave stand at a very tumultuous time, um, but it was it was really really good, very easy to digest, and it might be one of those things where I'm like, there's a lot of history in there that I'm like I listened to and I heard it, but clearly there's some facts that I have forgotten. It could be worth it. it could, I mean, I don't really usually re-listen to podcasts, but that might be one. That might be one. Um, all right. Dad Ronald says, the exoskin doesn't wear out. All right. Uh, Will Gravel says, I wear socks a lot longer than I think is socially acceptable. And Ted Ruth says, some of my socks are 30 years old. Yeah, I mean, my favorite ones that don't wear out are darn tough. Um, but I have some that are like... Uh, like the kinds that you get in three packs, those are the ones that tend to to, to wear out on me. But I really like those because I like the socks thin. And if that means that they wear out every once in a while, I'll take it, you know? So there's like a running 
Roadrunner Sports one that was like a three pack of like Dry Max socks that I always thought were really good, and I wore through like three all three pairs, you know. So I got to keep, I got to get. Did I say? Oh man, Adam says San San Jose, not San Diego. Did I say San Diego? I meant San Jose, Silicon Valley area. Sorry about that. I oh man, my mind is elsewhere today. It's not elsewhere. It's just foggy. Hmm. All right. But I gotta figure out what socks to wear with those see-through deviate nitro elites. Um, because I mean, do I just get it's like a navy colored accents and outsole, so just get navy socks? That seems like a little bit boring. And then like then I to have like that's the only shoe that I can wear it with, right? I don't know. That's the thing. It's like if you get fun socks, it limits how much. If you just get all black socks, you can wear them with all your shoes. That's what I do. So I don't know. Uh, yeah. Stevie 76 and my rabies foggy. I don't, I don't think so. I think I'm just traveled too much foggy. Um, all right. Blas Icazo says, Co out of edge plus Adios pro three and endorphin pro three, which would you say is the most approachable one for a sub four marathon? Uh, if it makes sense to use one. Well, I'm glad that you asked that. I'm not sure that, I, I mean, I still need to do more testing on the Endorphin Pro 3. The Edge Plus, for me, I it depends on if you like it. For me, the Edge Plus is not my favorite between Edge Plus and Sky Plus, so I would not gravitate towards that. But someone that likes the Edge Plus may. So that's a harder one to answer. Um, and the Audios Pro 3, probably the Audios Pro 3 of those three would be the one that I would reach for of those three. Because I think that one is the... Um, has the most travel, it's the most squishy. Mm. Luke Lyon wants to know if Tracksmith makes socks. They do, I have a pair of white Tracksmith socks. They're like crew height, and I don't wear a lot of white socks or crew height socks, um, but I have them. They're pretty good. I think, you know where I got them? I got them at, at the Chicago Marathon. They did like a, that pop-up store where if you went, you could get like the Chicago, like the tote bag. And inside was a pair of those socks while supplies lasted, because after a while they didn't last. And a, a banana with the Tracksmith banana sticker on it while supplies lasted, because that didn't always last either. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm. Oh, Sharmar said they have a speed no-show that comes in Navy. I didn't know they had a no-show socks. But if they have a speed no show that comes in navy, that's going to be the perfect one, I think, to go with this these shoes. So maybe I'll get those just to test out. That's what I'm going to do. Hmm. I'm still very surprised that there's like out of a tracksmith box came a pair of shoes. Very interesting. And it's a nice box. Like on the inside, it's kind of like wintry graphics on the inside too. I don't know. It was hard to get open, I'll tell you that. But once you got it open, that was nice. Michael Gerhardt wants to know, as a stride style runner, do you think the Vaporfly Next Percent works as well as the Metaspeed Sky Plus, or is the Next Percent better suited for cadence style runners? I think that, like, I still have a hard time with the cadence versus stride distinction. I think that there are, I mean, I just like to think of it as people's preferences. What do you like? Um, but... I think that people that like the Edge Plus will probably like the Vaporfly very much. The Vaporfly next percent. Is it better suited for a Cadence style runner? I don't know how to really answer that question. But I think that um, Stride runners will like the Vaporfly and they'll probably also like the Alpha Fly. The people that, but I don't think the other way is true. I think for cadence runners, I don't, they tend to really not like the alpha fly. So you know how some people are like, I don't know, the alpha fly just feels weird to me. Those are probably cadence runners. That's kind of what I think. That's a lot of hypothetical stuff. So I'm not sure. I've not done any testing on that. Eliza says, I like mini crew sock height for that awkward tan line. <laughs> uh, I, I'm a big, like, no-show sock fan. 
Like I like it to basically mirror like the silhouette of the shoe. That's kind of like where I like my my socks. And if it show, I don't want to see it. I just don't want it to show unless it's all the way up to the knee, like full over the calf. That's kind of what I like. Mm. Lou Boy says at that tracksmith event, I was actually behind you in line for the event with my wife. It was peak COVID, so I didn't know if I should ask for a pic or chat. But definitely coming to your shakeout run this year. Oh, that's awesome! Small world. Sorry, sorry about that. That things worked out that way, but we'll we'll have to get that selfie again this year. So then we could do that. <laughs> that was funny. Um, yeah, that was a weird. That was a kind of that was a weird event. Um, for those reasons, uh, what's funny? What's funny is that um, so I got to meet Nick Willis that time i think this was the second time i had met nicholas as well because i think i was at new york the like the fall before or did that come afterwards i don't remember but i met nick willis a couple of times now but i'm there talking with him at this event and i was like nick can we get a selfie and he's like yeah but i'm not wearing a mask he just didn't want to be photographed with on which i'm like i can i can understand that that's fine um, but he was just like very insistent. And I thought he was saying, is it okay if I wear one? I'm like, oh, sure, whatever you want. But he was like, no, is it okay if I don't wear one? And I'm like, all right, cool, whatever whatever you want to do. Thanks for the photo. You know, so it was really funny. Um, but he's a nice guy. He's a really nice guy. Uh, 1HP wants to know, did I do I watch House of Dragons? I don't. I don't. I don't really watch a lot of TV. You know what I, like, I don't, like, if I am going to watch anything, um, I will watch like the, um, Star Wars spinoff series. I like those. Um, but I just don't have enough time. I always forget. And then on flights, I usually just watch whatever. I always forget to like download stuff to my phone for flights. And then I watch whatever's streaming on like the United Airlines app. It's usually terrible stuff, which I'm fine with. It's kind of what I want. I'm trying to think, what did I watch? Um, I watched the Doctor Strange, like a uh, multiverse of madness. That was a very weird movie. That wasn't this trip. That was what was the trip before this one? The trip before this one. That's when I watched Multiverse of Madness. A uh, very weird movie. And then this one. I'm trying to think, what did I watch? It was also pretty weird and not as good as Multiverse of Madness. But I don't know. That's kind of like I'm, the only time I really watch stuff. Um. Davin Patterson says, how many miles should you put into a shoe before using them for a marathon? Well, I think in 2022, um, I'm not worried about breaking them in for a marathon. I'm worried about, are they going to give me a blister somewhere? So as many miles as you think you need to be comfortable that a shoe isn't going to give you a blister. For some people, that's like three shakeout miles. For some people, it's longer and they want to do a workout and really test it, um, especially if it's like a shoe they're not familiar with. Like I was listening to... Um, I don't know if it was the Believe in the Run interview or I think it was the Believe in the Run interview of Kira D'Amato after the World Chance Marathon. And they were like, why didn't you wear the Alpha Fly 2? Is it because you didn't like it? Like that kind of question. They were very curious. Um, and she was like, no, I just didn't have enough time to use it in workouts because she got the call up for to run on the U.S. team really late. She didn't have a chance to really put it into her rotation to see if it would work for her for a big high stakes marathon like world championships so she went with the alpha fly one i don't know what she ran in yesterday or the day before yesterday at falmouth she went out to falmouth first time out there she took the w beat defending champ ed de kiplagat um i know she was in alpha flies i just couldn't tell from where i was standing if it was alpha fly ones or twos all right let's do a couple more uh, and then I got to go today. You know, I told you guys I was going to be interviewing Matt Choi um, last week, but we had a little bit of scheduling mix up. So we uh, are circling back and we're going to do that today. So I got to get ready for that in a little bit. Um, Jason says, hello from Toronto. Would you arrange for a pre-race group run before New York City Marathon? I have to check with what my schedule, I mean, that that's my plan. We did a shakeout run last year, even though I wasn't running. Um, I did one with Emily Heller, Run Like Heller. Um, we did a meetup in Central Park, and we did a nice, uh, fun 5K through there where we ran, literally not ran into, but crossed paths with Emma Bates. Um, that was pretty fun. Um, and also, the shakeout run itself was fun. We had a good turnout. 
I'm planning on doing one in my mind. I'd like to do one, but I also don't know what my schedule is going to be because I'm running with New Balance, and so like I don't know if they're going to have like stuff planned that will prevent me from doing that. So I'll reach out to them soon and start because we got to start planning that kind of stuff. So we'll figure it out. Kevin Hong said that running testing account uh, noticed a significant drop off in performance from a fresh pair versus a worn pair of super shoes. Next, we're going to save mine for a races only. I mean, I think that the for me the main takeaway on that is that's interesting data, but it very clearly says in the charts that it's an N of one, and like he's a very talented runner to begin with. So like it, I'm a very different person than that person <laughs> is how I see it. And so there's certain shoes that I like and you know, when the shoes that I like are ranked high on his chart and the shoes that I don't like as much are ranked low in the chart, I find it validating. But at the same time, it's like, you know, take the data with a grain of salt. I would say, um, you know, you've had shoes that are newer versus older before in the carbon plated shoe category. So you kind of have an idea of when you should be saving it and when, you, when you're pushing it beyond like optimal race performance. So, mm. Sean says, I like Heller. She's huge on the ride 15 right now. She is. And I don't, I don't understand the ride. I, I, I was a huge, my fir first ride was a ride 10 GTX back when it was ever run. And, um, I love that shoe. That shoe was so good. But, um, like, uh, so I've been running it in a while, but, I just don't love, like the 15 just seemed very firm to me. I don't know if it's going to be like one of those shoes that I think is annoying and it's like a 50 mile break in. I, just, I think that's annoying, but I don't know if that's what it is or what. Maybe I need to give it another shot, but I ran it like a couple times and I was like, that's kind of enough for me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Lou says, the Believe in the Run guys and Megan are running New York City too. Yes, they are. So it'll be fun. A lot of people are doing it, um, at least in like my little universe. Um, so it seems like a lot of my friends will be there. So I'm very excited for it. But we're running it like kind of like slightly different pathways. Um, so I don't know how much our Croswell paths, cr paths, oh, see, backwards. I'm all messed up today. I don't know how much our paths will cross. Um, but you know, I'm sure we'll see them at some point in New York. So I'm excited for that. Very excited. Um, I think that's going to be a good place for me to leave it for today. Cause clearly I need to clear my head and get things sorted out, uh, before I sit down for my next conversation with Matt Choi. Um, so hopefully that'll work out for today and then we can, um, uh, get that on the internet for you guys to check out because I think it'll be a fun conversation. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, tomorrow there won't be a video, but we will do a live stream. Same time as today, 1 p.m. Central Time. Hopefully I'll see you then. In the meantime, be safe out to everybody. Thanks.